Hello ladies and gentlemen, good day to each and uh, every one of us, especially my students in the subject Fundamentals of Criminal Investigation with Intelligence. Fundamentals of Criminal Investigation with Intelligence is a subject which is provided under Chad Memo number 5 series of 2018 in accordance with the provision of Republic Act number no. 7722 or the Higher Education Act of 1994. Okay, so welcome to the uh, part 2 or the second video for uh, this uh, subject, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so let us uh, see what are the topics under this uh, video presentation okay so the topics that will be discussed first topic what are the constitutional and statutory rights of the uh, accused second topic what is the proper procedure in uh, making arrest and conducting custodial interrogation under the philippine jurisprudence and third what is miranda doctrine and fourth what are the fundamental laws related to rights of the accused? Okay, so let us start to discuss. So what are the constitutional rights of the accused, ladies and gentlemen? Under 1935 Philippine Constitution, it is already present in Article 3, Section 17, Paragraph 1. It states that in all criminal proceeding, the accused shall enjoy the right to be heard by himself and the uh, counsel. So, from that statement alone, uh, in 1935 uh, Philippine Constitution, the uh, accused should uh, be heard before it condemns. Because here in our country, uh, the uh, accused is considered innocent unless proven wise guilty beyond reasonable doubt diba? so considered po na inusente ang isang tao na nasampahan ng kaso unless kung na prove na na siya po ay uh, nagkasala at hinatulan na ng korte then that's the time that we can call him as a criminal okay but then pag hindi pa po ito convicted he is called as accused Pagkakahuli ng pulis, anong tawag sa kanya? Suspect or pinaghihinalaan pa lamang. Pagka po nakita ng prosecutor na meron pong probable cause to believe that the crime has been committed and the respondent is probably guilty thereof, then such person is called as respondent. If uh, a criminal case was already filed in court, then that person is called as suspect. Then, uh, if uh, the court have already convicted him by final judgment, then that's the time that you can call him as a criminal. And, of course, uh, if that person have already served his or her sentence, he is called as ex-convict. So, uh, doon pa lang sa 1935 Constitution natin, makikita natin na meron ng due process. No? May due process na nadidinggin muna ang panig po ng, ng uh, akusado at kanyang uh, abogado para ipagtanggol siya sa korte ayan, sa criminal proceeding. Okay? In 1973 uh, Philippine Constitution, Article 3, ano ang nakasaad po doon? No person shall be compelled to be a witness against himself that any person under investigation for the commission of of an offense shall have the right to remain in silence or that is what we call as right against self-incrimination na kung saan hindi ka pwedeng maging pistigo laban sa iyong sarili. Okay? To have a counsel and to be informed of such right. Okay? So may karapatan ka rin na kumuha at pumili ng iyong sariling abogado at yung karapatan ng isang akusado na ma-inform yung kanyang karapatan. Okay? No force, intimidation, 
walang pamumersa, pananakot, or any means, no? which will vitiate the free will shall be used against him. Any confession obtained in violation of this section shall be inadmissible as evidence. Okay? So, kung natakot yung tao, kaya nagsalita, nag-confess, then such confession will not also be admissible as evidence in court because that is violation of right of the accused against self-incrimination. What are the constitutional rights of the accused? So, uh, this is a continuation. So, sa 1973 Constitution, meron na pong karapatan ng akusado na nakasaad po doon sa ating Constitution. Sa 1987 Philippine Constitution, Article 3, Section 12, Paragraph 1, ano nakasaad? The 1987 Philippine Constitution specified the constitutional rights of any person arrested or under uh, investigation of a criminal Offense. From the provision of Article 3, Section 12, these are the primary rights or constitutional rights of the person or of a person under custodial investigation or a person arrested. Number one, the right to be informed of his right to remain in silent. Number two, the right to have a competent and independent counsel, preferably of his own choice or to be provided with one. And number three, the right to be informed of his or her rights. Okay? Yan. So, sana malinaw po yung kanyang tatlong karapatan mga kapangan. Okay, next. What is Miranda Doctrine? Ano nga ba yung Miranda Doctrine? Di ba? Dahil ito po ay sinusunod ng ating uh, Philippine Jurisprudence. Okay? At ito rin po ay pinagkuhanan ng nakasaad po sa Constitution regarding the rights of person arrested, detained, and under custodial investigation. So, the Miranda Doctrine, it is a rule or principle in criminal jurisprudence that requires mandatory pre Interrogation warnings. So, it is conducted before interrogation start concerning self-incrimination and right to legal counsel of the suspect. The culmination of many Supreme Court decision in United States focusing on the rights of suspect during police interrogation as well as uh, in the case of uh, Ernesto Miranda, versus State of Arizona in 1966. So, ito po'y galing po ano, sa kaso ni Ernesto Miranda versus State of Arizona. Okay? So, uh, it is an American jurisprudence. Uh, okay? The Miranda Doctrine mandates that prior to any questioning, the police must let the suspect to know that he has the right to remain in silent that anything he says can be or can and will be used against him in any court of laws. He has the right to hire and consult with an attorney and to have his counsel present during questioning and if he cannot afford one or if he cannot hire one or an attorney, one will be appointed to represent him before any questioning if he wishes one. And, number three, he cannot waive this Miranda rights except in writing and in the presence of the council. And take note, the Miranda rights should be stated in the language known to and can be understood by that person who will be put into custodial investigation or who will be arrested. So, kailangan po maipaliwanag doon po sa tao yung kanyang karapatan sa salita na kanyang naiintindihan. So, kung Tagalog, Tagalugin mo. Okay? So, kapag ka Koreano, humanap ka ng interpreter. Diba? Ayan po mga kapangarap. Okay, ano pa? No evidence, either confession or admission, obtained as a result of interrogation, can be used against the person questioned unless and until the Miranda warning were given and explained and waiver has been properly subscribed 
by suspect in the presence of the uh, counsel. Pag sinabing confession, yan po ay pag-amin sa isang kasalanan or admission of guilt. Pagka naman admission, yan po ay pag-amin sa mga pangyayari lamang or admission of some facts. No? Ayan. So, how the Miranda rights are waived? The Miranda rights of the suspect are deemed waived after he subscribed a waiver. Take note, the waiver should be in writing, hindi po pwedeng oral. Dapat nakasulat at nakapirma siya at nakapirma rin yung kanyang abogado, syempre. That is right, have been fully explained to him. That he understood the nature of each right and that he wishes to talk about the circumstances of the case being investigated. The waiver must be made accordingly and intelligently in the presence of a competent counsel. After giving the Miranda warnings and in order to secure a waiver, the following question should be asked and an affirmative reply should be secured to each question. And the question or this question should be present in the waiver. Ano yung mga tanong? Do you understand each of the, these rights that I have explained to you? Then, after which, pag sinabing yes, having these rights in mind, do you wish to talk to us now? Pag sinabing yes, yan, so magsasalita. And of course, he should affix his signature in his affidavit no, or certain statement. And of course, para malaman din, no? na andun nga yung abogado, kailangan yung abogado ay mag-sign din doon po sa affidavit. Okay? Yan po, mga kapangarap. Okay, next. What is the proper procedure in making arrest and conducting custodial interrogation under the Philippine jurisprudence? Okay? So, Philippine jurisprudence dictates that correct procedure to be followed by police officer In making the arrest, in conducting custodial interrogation, it is stated under People v. Gait in the Supreme Court Report Annotated 465, Ladies and Gentlemen. Ano daw ang susundin? At the time of a person or at the time a person is arrested, it shall be the duty of arresting officer to identify himself. Yan, so magpakilala ka bilang isang polis. Number two, inform for the reason For the arrest and show the warrant of arrest if any to the suspect. Yan. So, ipakita mo or sabihin mo yung dahilan kung bakit mo siya aarestuhin at ipakita mo yung warrant of arrest kung meron ka. Okay? Yan. And inform the suspect's rights or yung kanyang Miranda rights, rights to remain in silent, right to have a counsel, and right to be informed of his right, ladies and gentlemen. However, this, there are exemptions to the rule, siyempre. Okay? So, pwede bang hindi na sabihin yung pong uh, rights ng aarestuhin? Siyempre. Number one, kung yung aarestuhin ay isang kilalang pusakal na kriminal. Okay? Number two, kung yung pag-inform nung kanyang karapatan ay uh, pwede pong malagay sa panganib ang buhay ng Polis. At number three, kung yung pag inform doon sa uh, offender or doon sa tao ay pwedeng dahilan para siya po ay makatakas. So, yun yung mga pagkakataon na kung saan hindi mo muna kailangang uh, sabihin yung karapatan, uh, karapatan ng isang taong inaaresto. So, pwede mo nang sabihin yon pagka pinupusasan. ba diba? Ayan. What are the fundamental laws related to the rights of the accused? Okay, so these are some of the fundamental laws related to the rights of the accused, ladies and gentlemen. This is the statutory right. When you say statutory right, it is right provided by the statute. We have Republic Act number 7438. What is RA number 7438? It is an act defining some certain rights or acts of rights. Of a person arrested, detained, and or under custodial investigation, no. As of course, it also 
uh, enumerates the duties of the arresting, detaining, and investigating officers and providing penalties for violation thereof. Ayan. So, nakasaad din po sa ating RA number 7438, yung karapatan po ng isang inaaresto, ng isang akusado. Ayan. Okay, question. The law, which is otherwise known as the Anti-Torture Act, okay, is another law or which uh, states the rights of a person arrested, detained, and under custodial investigation. Na sinasabi dito na meron pong criminal liability yung isang tao kapag ka po tinorture mo, no? yung pong suspect. So, anong batas yun? Letter A, Republic Act Number 7438. B. Republic Act Number 9745, Letter C. RA 6981, or Letter D. Republic Act Number 10175. And the law which is otherwise known as the Anti-Torture Act is Republic Act Number 9745, ladies and gentlemen. Republic Act Number 7438 is the law which enumerates the rights of person arrested. Detained or under custodial investigation, it also enumerates the duties of public officers. It was approved on April 27, 1992. Republic Act Number 9745 is the Anti-Torture Act of 2009, and Republic Act Number 6981 is the Witness Protection, Security, and Benefit Act which was approved on April 24 of 1991. If there are witness who are afraid to talk, no? So, pagka may mga natatakot na witnesses doon sa suspect, yun, pwede mo pong, uh, uh, pwede mo pong ibigay sa kanila yung pong Witness Protection and Security uh, Benefit Act, ladies and gentlemen. So I hope that you have learned something from this uh, short video presentation, no? So thank you very much for uh, listening for the short video presentation. Don't forget to uh, click subscribe button. Then after clicking the uh, subscribe, then uh, you click the bell button or you hit the bell button. Then after which click all so that you will be uh, Notified if ever I will upload the uh, continuation of this video. Thank you very much and God bless us all.